Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about the cell injury, but not describing how cell can be injured, describing how cell responds to injury, which in this diagram I brief it, and after that I keep going with that. If you have a cell and we put some stress on the cell, the result depends how much stress is there. If cell can tolerate the stress, actually cell will adapt to situation. We call it adaptation, which is my explanation briefly today. Or not, the injury is too much for the cell and cell cannot tolerate that. Of course the cell will be injured, which I will discuss in the cell injury with detail later. And sometimes cell will adapt, however, this adaptation cannot be forever. And if there is too much stress, even after adaptation, cell can be processed to the injury or death. Anyway, cell injury by itself has a different part. It depends what type of injury is there, how severe is the injury, and what type of cell we have, and many other factors, which I will discuss in the next few uh, lectures, short lectures. First, it's going to be apoptosis, or at the end, it's going to be necrosis, that the cell will be dead totally. And what is the difference between apoptosis and necrosis? I will uh, tell you in the next lecture. Let us start talking about adaptation. As I told you, when cell is under stress, cell will be adapted to the situation. Those adaptation could be physiologic adaptation, or pathologic adaptation. Why physiologic? Because sometimes we do adaptation, our body actually does adaptation to the situation, to the stress of. Like uh, those people, they do bodybuilding, weightlifting. Their muscle bulk will increase. I will let you know later on how. Increase. This is adaptation to stress because they put too much stress on their muscle and eventually their muscle will be stronger, they can tolerate more. And many other situations, physiologic like uh, development of breast during puberty, there are some physiologic adaptation to the situation. This adaptation, how is happening, how some will be adapt to the situation? The number of cells can increase, or the size, or not. The shape or phenotype, the appearance of the cell, or the function. Actually, all of these can happen. Sometimes, even combination of these two in one situation. We have a term to describe these changes. We call it hypertrophia, hyperplasia, atrophy and metaplasia. I'm going to briefly describe what is this adaptation. That means we are going to review four adaptation. Hypertrophy, hyperplasia, atrophy and metaplasia. First, hypertrophy. As I show here, hypertrophy that means the number of size. Actually the size is increasing, not number of cells. If you have, for instance, a skeletal muscle, you know a skeletal muscle after but the number of cells is not increasing and it's not going to be duplicated forever. We will have the same amount of uh, muscle fiber. However, the size of that cell can increase. As I mentioned, example, doing exercise, bodybuilding and whatever, for athletes, the bulk of muscle will increase. The reason is the size will increase. Please pay attention. This increasing size, it doesn't mean the cell will be swollen with too much water. No. The size is increasing by increasing all organelles inside the cell, including mitochondria. For instance, why the muscle bulk is increased, the power also will increase for that muscle. The reason is those muscle fibers are bigger and they have more mitochondria as well to produce more energy items. That's why they can lift heavier things. But of course, 
they train themselves by putting stress a step by step after a while they get that muscle bump. How is happening? What actually causes this? I, we can classify the two major things. Workload or hormonal stimulation or both of them. Workload example, as I said, like it. that one. Skeletal muscle or workload for heart, left ventricle, will be hypertrophic if the workload is high. Ask yourself, what can cause too much workload for heart? There are plenty of reasons for valvular disease, but one of them which is very popular. Actually, not popular, it's better to say very common disease. What is that? Hypertension, perfect. When the heart is trying to push blood against the, too much pressure because of patient situation, which is hypertension, definitely workload will increase and the heart, which left ventricle in this case, will adapt to the situation and after a while the thickness of ventricle will increase. Hormonal stimulation. Sometimes there is a hormone which stimulates hypertrophy, like uh, changing breast during pregnancy, during puberty, and many other things which the hormone can stimulate and increase the size of organ or uh, tissues in general. That's enough for hypertrophy, increasing the size. Second is hyperplasia. Hyperplasia is increasing the number of cells. That means in this case, we must have more cells. Of course, not all tissue are able to do that. Some tissue can do, which those are the tissue has potential to duplicate or some tissue which duplicate every single day. Hyperplasia, that means increasing number. Also, we have physiologic hyperplasia, like a hormonal stimulation, or compensatory. For hormonal, I can give you uterus again. During pregnancy, the size of uterus, which is very small like that, and is, is inside the pelvis, the size will increase and after nine months reach almost to the xiphoid area. How big is going to be? But how? What's happening? Actually for uterus in this case is hyperplasia and hypertrophia. That means not only the size of cell is increasing, the number of cell increasing. That's why after giving birth and even after six weeks which normally the physiology of pregnant mother will back to the normal. It's still the uterus, in, it, it's not going to be the same size that it was before pregnancy. That means the preg after first pregnancy, definitely the size of uterus never going to be back to, because the number of cells over there is increased. And compensatory, what is compensatory? There are some organs, for instance, liver, Normally, the liver is not re replicating or in, uh, duplicating the number of cells. However, it has a potential to do that. If you donate a portion of liver from one patient to another patient, what will happen? After a while, you will see, for both of them, whatever they have, for donate, who donated and who received, the size of liver increased after operation. The reason is that liver has potential to do that. In the normal situation, it never happened. Unless something happened to the liver, with, for instance, we take portion of liver for surgery, then that will be replaced. That replacement, remember, is not going to be the same structure, anatomical structure, like a liver we have, but still is a, a liver cell. We have pathologic hyperplasia. There are plenty of examples of hyperplasia because of um, pathologic situation like hyperplasia in prostate, which sometimes you will see they call it hypertrophy as well, but uh, to be honest, mostly it's hyperplasia of the sun. 
Or we have to ask ourselves, hyperplasia is good or bad? Of course we have physiology, pathology, but hyperplasia is good in one way, which help us to heal our wound. Connective tissue, after injury, after cutting ourselves, how tissue will be repaired? Actually, tissue need to be replicated, need to be increased the number of those, including connective tissue. That's why hyperplasia help us to heal a wound after injury. Next, after hyperplasia, the adaptation is atrophia. Atrophia is opposite to hypertrophia. That means the size is decreasing. I'll give you an example. Maybe you have had this experience or you have seen somebody in your family or friends. They broke their arms or legs and they use a cast for six weeks or more or less. And after a while, when they remove the cast, you will see that limb, upper or lower, doesn't matter. The muscle bulk is a little bit thinner or less than the limbs they were using and they didn't have problem. The reason is they were not using it for a while and it caused some degree of atrophy, but it's just as, as an example. Atrophy, why is happening? Hormone stimulation. Imagine thyroid gland is controlled by a pituitary gland. Yeah? Thyroid stimulating hormone activated thyroid. If there is no stimulator like a TSH, the thyroid is going to respond to that. Or adrenal gland or any other. When there is no hormone stimulation, that means the target organ will be atrophic. Innervation. Of course, decreased innervation is equal to atrophy as well. I give you an example. Have you seen people live after a stroke? You will see that side they got a stroke. Then actually, of course, in the brain is opposite. But the side they got a stroke, you will see their limbs also compared to the other side. Not only there is no power or strength or maybe a little bit less, but the muscle bulk also decreased. The reason is there is no nerve. No nerve, no muscle function. Same things, no blood, no nutrients. Both of these, that means the muscle or whatever organ is, is not receiving enough supply. Enough supply, that means that organ or tissue will be malnourished and will be atrophic. And sometimes it's opposite. That means all of them, you see, are decreasing and causing atrophy. But in some situation, increasing. But increasing what? Pressure has atrophy. I give you an example. Imagine you have a patient and that patient has renal stone and that stone block the passage of urine. What will happen? The kidney is producing urine and the amounts of urine before obstruction will increase. And as a result, the pressure will be higher. When pressure will be higher, it press and compress actually the liver, uh, sorry, kidney, calis, and after a while, after long time, you will see that calis and the cortex and the medulla of kidney actually, the calis expanded, but cortex and medulla are atrophic. The reason is too much pressure over them. Wherever we have too much pressure, which somehow is affect the blood uh, flow and nutrients of that organ or tissue, we will have atrophy uh, as well. The four type of adaptation so far we learned: increasing size, increasing number, decreasing size is metabolism. Here, this is it's not about the size or number; it's about changing phenotype, changing from one cell to another cell. And both of them as function, actually it's changing from one adult cell type to another cell adult cell type. For instance, <coughs> I'll give you an example. Esquamous to glandular. Esquamous is type of cell. Glandular also is type of cell. But in some part of our body we have esquamous like uh, end up esophagus, the esophagus junction between esophagus and the stomach. But some 
stress, like exposure to too much uh, stomach secretion because of reflux, can damage or cause injury to that cell or more stress to that cell and change the phenotype of cell, which is adaptation to glandular. We call it Barrett oesophagus. This Barrett oesophagus is very common because many people, they have reflux. But the bad things about Barrett oesophagus is it can be even go further and cause tumor or cancer of the oesophagus. Or some other glandular to gland. In a, when you do a study in the stomach, you will see some type of gland which belongs to intestine instead of stomach. This is also a type of metaplasia. We call it intestinal metaplasia. And what can cause that? Like a helicobacter pylori can cause that. Or glandular to squamous. That means in the normal anatomy we have uh, histology, we have glandular cell, but because of stress that cell changed to squamous, like a bronchus. The bronchus we have glandular, and you know some of them they have cilia for cleaning the airway, but exposure to smoke, who is smoking for long term, it changed the nature of cell, and from glandular it changed to the squamous. That's why they lose that cilia, the function of cilia, and because of that reason, because they cannot clean the airway very well, they change their function. Those people who smoke, they have more sputum compared to the other people. The reason is they lost the function of this cell. These four are the major adaptation. Next, I will talk about the necrosis and apoptosis. However, before I finish, I would like to define these three terms. Dysplasia, aplasia, and hypoplasia. This like a dysfunction, that means abnormal, disorder cell growth. In this situation, cell will grow a little bit disorganized. We have too much mitotic activity over there, and also the nuclear size, it will be bigger than other cells which are normal. The ratio of nuclear size to the cytoplasm will increase. These type of changes could be, could be the first step before cancer, and we care about that. Maybe they change, maybe not, but we always care about this plastic cell because there is a potential to be a cancer cell. Aplasia, A that means no. Aplasia that means failure of cell production. That means mostly during embryonic life, when there is something wrong, like there is no circulation or there is a blockage, those organ or cell, those organ or tissue won't develop and you don't see any, we call it aplasia. Sometimes no. We will see some cell production, but not as much as it's supposed to be. It's decreased in cell production, that's why we call it hypoplasia. Aplasia, no, none. Hypo, less than normal. And dysplasia, that means disorder cell growth, abnormal mitotic activity, and cell is very disorganized in structure as well. That's enough for uh, this lecture. Next lecture, I will talk about necrosis.